Hi, my name is Thomas Eger. I'm the creator of creatinggreatsoftware.com, where I teach people about designing, architecting, and creating great software. This is part two of the mini course Microservices. In part two, we'll learn, we will learn about um, domain-driven design concepts and combining that with the modern microservice architectures, especially when you try to do this in the cloud. Let's dive right in. So the difficulty is, as you learn things over time, uh, you learn some concepts like we had touched on earlier on domain-driven design. Okay, so domain-driven design at the very beginning, uh, as I showed you in um, in the book recommendations by Eric Evans, um, back then uh, when he created when he wrote this book, uh, cloud computing wasn't really a major uh, theme at that time. I don't think it. I don't think uh, cloud computing really was uh, anything common there. Yeah, so really it was born out of on-premise systems and the concept of domain-driven design. But how do you take this fantastic domain-driven design concept and now you want to apply it to a cloud computing solution? So here is the part where you can marry some of these best features with some newer ways of creating solutions. In this case, we want to create a microservice uh, with a core domain and physically deploy it as a microservice, but maintain the core domain or the domain itself inside the microservice. And with the ports and adapter style architecture, which is one of the styles you can use, it will really help you not just from a from a uh, conceptual design, but also from the implementation point of view. So microservices will force this physical boundary where you cannot leak information outside a service because it's physically isolated. It runs in its own operating process, right? So um, in this case, we'll take a look at a billing domain. That is our core domain. And billing domain has things like invoices, um, being able to charge customers with a credit card, create invoices, create charges, those kind of things. And so how do we have now a billing service, billing microservice, but my overall solution is actually about property management. And so my, my delivery, my solution for maybe property managers in the real estate industry would be, okay, I might need two microservices or more, depending. So, so one microservice can deal strictly with property management, right? Uh, so property management is the core, is probably the core piece of a real estate software company where, where you need to maintain the information about tenants, property owners, multiple property owners, work orders, uh, a real-time ledger of some sort, right, where you can have these transactions recorded, but also you need a way to take um, tenants' money somehow. And so as a property management application, I may end up with two separate microservices and most likely will have multiple. But in this example, I'll show you just two, two microservices. One is dealing with the property management side of it, the other one is really strictly from a generic domain point of view of a, on the billing side of it. And so as a whole, I want to deliver a property management solution. 